Anyway, after about 45 seconds to a minute, when I realized, you know, something's really wrong here, I just started yelling underwater. Bubbles were coming up and it was crazy. It's crazy to see how much it changes everything and how much your perspective on everything changes. Close family and I think that's what uh, helps you get through something like this. The, whenever you see a young person have a spinal cord injury that is so life-changing and dramatic, you know, it, 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 it hits home as a physician and as a human being. Connor Hurdle grew up just outside of Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. He graduated from Parkview Education Centre. And uh, I looked over and I saw at that time there was security coming. And I m had eye contact with the security guard. And he said, uh, you're trying to dial 911? And I, I said, yes. He said, it's already done. The ambulance is on its way. Imagine taking one jump that changes your entire life forever. All I did was just bent down over him and I just, I was in his face just talking to him and trying to keep him occupied so he wasn't thinking about what was going on while we were waiting for the ambulance. But it turns out being stuck face down in the water wasn't his biggest problem. It's what left him unable to move. And uh, what the results had shown from my MRI was I broke my uh, couple bones in my cervical spine, my C5 vertebrae, C6, and a slight fracture in my C7. And it had also damaged my spinal cord, which, as you see, has left me paralyzed. I'm an outgoing guy, uh, really friendly, always like to be out doing something. Uh, I hate being alone, pretty much. Uh, just, I love being around people. As much as you don't want to face the bed in your mind, the bed was there. It was something definitely wrong and you could tell he couldn't finish a sentence just about as soon as I got there and, and he knew it. He said, Dad, I can't, I can't finish a sentence and, and, and he was losing his breath. He's about as social as you can be and is loved by many. It really brings you together as, I don't know, as a family, as a group of friends. Like, our group of friends is way bigger than I ever realized it before Connor's accident. And on July 11th, 2015, one jump in Cavendish PEI did change Connor's life forever. We were sitting there having a chat, and one of my buddies had come over and gave me a hug. Somebody had dumped ketchup and mustard on him, and he gave me a hug from behind and gotten a little bit on me, and we're just like, wow. Why don't we go jump in the pool again and give it a wash off? So we uh, jumped the fence, went in the pool, and uh, I'd gotten back out, and somebody yelled to me, I'm not sure who, said, Hurdle man, you still got ketchup and mustard on your back. So I was like, all right, cool. And um, anyway, I guess I turned around, and I'm not exactly sure how, uh, how I jumped in the pool because I blacked out for a second. And however I did, I hit my head hard enough that, uh, and in the right way, that I broke my neck. The pool was closed and fenced off, but Connor and his friends were in it throughout the day to try and cool off. We were going on like the having a, a great day. Like, I don't know, it was like 30 degrees. Like, it was like hot as hell that day. Connor was originally diagnosed as a complete quadriplegic. I have use of my biceps, my wrist extensors, and my shoulders, and that's it. And so when you're complete, um, you have zero movement, zero sensation below that level of injury. Though it changed his life, he still tries to take part in as many activities as possible. This includes watching and cheering on his old hockey team. Hockey's my life, <laughs> simple as that. Um, from being into it since I was four years old. Um, again, it's my life. Uh, I don't know another life other than hockey. And to, uh, to have this happen, I wasn't able to finish my junior hockey. I missed my overager year. And that was really upsetting um, to know I couldn't lace up my skates and get back out there with the boys and uh, do what I love to do. Today looks a lot different for Connor. Even getting out of bed in the morning has become a challenge. It's scary how quick something so severe can happen within a split second your life changes. Okay. Um, it's sad. <laughs> I don't ever wish it on anybody. It's also affected many other parts of his life, 
some that get a bit more personal, like dating. Dating was huge. Um, what type of girl's going to want to date a guy in a wheelchair that can't really do much by himself? Um, how am I, as a young guy, going to go out with my friends still, go to the bars, go to concerts, go to the movies, all that type of stuff? Um, Connor's accent has it's changed the dynamic of our friendship, but hasn't changed our friendship at all. It's changed how we have to go about going to the bars, um, carrying him up the stairs to my house, or carrying him up the stairs to a bar. Like it, it's it's changed like everything, but it's still our friendship is still the same. Connor now lives in the city with his older brother Bryce and an in-home nurse. He lives close to Mount St. Vincent University, where he is studying commerce. He takes most of his classes online in case he has to go somewhere for rehab. But he goes to this one on campus. I have another assignment for you that is actually already posted. I'm so on the ball. It's posted on Moodle already. When I think back, you know, so many thoughts go through your mind when you get in that type of situation. Um, I know a main one for me was uh, my family when I grow up, how I'm going to support them, um, how I'm going to teach my kids to ride a bike or, or get on a pair of skates and go for a skate, learn how to play hockey and how to uh, support my wife and that type of thing. It, uh, it gets to you. It, uh, it really gets to you. Since the accident, however, Connor's rehabilitation has progressed. To see that I'm able to do what I am now is, it gives you that hope again. You go back to that word, hope, that hopefully one day I'll be able to push through this and get back to my normal self. But it's, it's good to see the progress I've made so far. It uh, always puts that thought in the back of my mind that Maybe one day I'll be able to get back up on my feet again and do what I love doing. A couple months after the accident, he did receive some good news. My first test would have been July 12th, July 13th, 2015, when I came into the hospital. And then I'd gotten my second Asia scale done when I went to uh, the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center on September 9th, I think it was. Um, they'd done a second test and had reassessed me as an incomplete which was huge. So when a patient transitions uh, from complete to an incomplete injury, then there is more likelihood of any flickers of movement uh, in the muscles below the level of injury having further recovery. Um, not that I have any movement now below my level of injury, but I have patchy sensation throughout my legs. Um, I can feel somewhat in my toes. Now, it's not normal sensation either. It's, sort of like you're being touched through a bunch of layers of clothing. Uh, it's really different. <laughs> when he first got out of surgery, he was in a power wheelchair, but he had plenty of motivation to get into a manual one. And that was also frustrating to have to be doing this the rest of your life. I just, I wasn't into it. <laughs> and that's as soon as I was given the option to get to a, a manual chair, I said, Yep, get me, give me that chair ASAP. Uh, I'm pushing myself around this rehab. The reason Connor's uh, the way he is today because he's a fighter. He's strong. He, he doesn't give up and he doesn't take no for an answer. And he says without the support he's received, he wouldn't be where he is today. It's huge. It's what got. It's what's gotten me through this. Um, it's just crazy um, when something like this happens to you. How many people come out and show that they care? Um, I knew I had friends, but it's amazing how many people have come out to show their support for me, and I'm lost for words as how to explain how thankful I am. Connor doesn't have many lonely days because he usually has someone here. Uh, his mom and I are here whenever he, whenever he needs us. The support hasn't just been emotional or physical, but financial as well. I'm so thankful for that because people don't realize until you're in the situation how expensive things are. I mean the chair I'm sitting in was $6,500. Um, my hospital beds range from $1,500 to $5,000. 
um, the lift in my home, the renovation I, renovations I've had to do to my home, um, my van, my shower chair. A GoFundMe page was started to help Connor and his family with the costs. So far it's raised over $19,000 and a hashtag was also started in Connor's name. And I said to AJ, I was like, what if, we, like, I, like, hope for hurdle? Like, do you like that? And AJ, looked, like, his eyes, I was like, that's it. Like, that's, that's it. Like, that's perfect. And it caught on and people started tweeting it and, it and hashtagging it after Instagram posts and Facebook posts and it just blew up. After that, Riley worked on getting bracelets made, which have also contributed to the money raised. In total, Connor's received over $35,000 but the costs keep adding up. And rehab, that's been a huge cost as well. I'd gone out to Regina, Saskatchewan for the month of November, uh, and that was because of all the support I've gotten, but that for one month, $10,000. And the support isn't just coming from people. Um, he fools around with them now and then, but uh, everybody loves him. Like I said, he's a good dog. Despite these challenges, however, Connor says he's never giving up. You always have to be hopeful when you're doing something, no matter what it is, whether you're in my situation, whether you're trying to succeed at something at work, hope you need that. He says he wants to get down to Florida to seek the best rehabilitation services available. I, uh, I'm looking at other things. I'm really heavy into talks with uh, the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis down in Miami, Florida. I've been in talks with uh, Dr. Jim Guest there and uh, he's been a huge help. He's always updating me on different studies that are going around North America and uh, different things that are becoming available and my hopes is to to go down there and uh, be in a clinical study of some sorts that uh, hopefully is the start of something that will cure this injury. But for right now, Connor is still taking on the daily challenges of being paralyzed. It's not as simple as getting in my car and going. It's, all right, who, who's gonna get me in my van? Who's gonna lock me in my van? Um, who's gonna be able to drive me? When do I need to be picked up? Oh shoot, I have to pee. Who's gonna help me do that? All that's gone. Um, and that bothers me. And like I said about him being independent, I think that would be the thing that would frustrate him the most, is not being as independent as he would like to be. He doesn't want people to have to help him, but he knows he has to, to get his day done and get through it. Still, Connor says he tries not to focus on everything he's lost, but on everything he still has. Here's to the